voodoo and paranormal kind of go hand in hand. I would not be one of those like trying to like provoke. Is there anything you would like to tell people? This is like a small, small opening to find a camping ground. So, I mean, you can get in trouble just being in a graveyard and being disrespectful. It's starting to rain. We really need to hurry up and set this tent up. Dude, that looks like a handprint on you for real. <laughs> We found this topic very vital to investigate seeing as Marie Laveau was the queen of voodoo in New Orleans. Some people believe that while she was alive she practiced dark magic and cast spells and curses upon people, while others believe to this day she's more of a healer and people still visit locations of her shrine in order to make wishes for prosperity and health. Nonetheless, this is as real as it gets when it comes to voodoo. So Tanner and I headed to New Orleans in order to uncover more and investigate the actual history of Marie Laveau. We knew it would not be an easy task trying to contact or make communication with a spirit of this nature. However, we had to try. Trying to get mussels, oysters? Oysters. Ah, I'll so eat 50 nasty, oysters man. today. Yeah? I'll eat over 50 oysters. Oh, oh look check at that. that out. That's pretty creepy looking. People visiting New Orleans would probably be surprised to see just how many like voodoo shops there are and how knowledgeable the people that work there actually are. It was super interesting to learn. We're here. We're in the home of voodoo right now. We obviously Got a feel for the town the first night. We went out, had a couple drinks. One day I got on my knees and I prayed. Just looking up on my soul. Saying, God, could you please guide the way? Show me peace, I don't know. I felt trapped inside of my room. Knowing that I can't leave. I can't face the world today. Overwhelmed with things I had First night in New Orleans. Tracing down the uh, Buddha Queen. Lord, I am so sorry, this is not an excuse. I just wanna ask and I cast my cares on you. We asked around, met some locals, and they gave us a name, Jacob Dragon, a man that is super knowledgeable about the particular subject we are investigating, so we decided to pay him a visit and get a tarot card reading. I've never actually had a real tarot card reading or visited a, a real psychic. Um, this was my first time doing so, but I definitely wanted to see what kind of uh, information I'd be able to get from the cards. So, what kind of answers? Uh, from the other side, just try to see if there's truth behind it. Just any kind of contact. We look at it like we'll use any kind of instruments to get answers. But you're looking to prove it in some objective manner, is that right? Yeah. Like you want to see if you're if you fuck yourself over that much shit that you should be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can get in trouble just being in a graveyard and being disrespectful. What I will say, though, is that the cemeteries here 
be extremely respectful. Right. If you are attempting to have some communication with spirits, nothing is going to make you 100% safe in those situations, but you are a lot more likely to come out unscathed if you have a respectful approach. Right, right. And that's what we usually do. I would, I would not be one of those, like, trying to, like, provoke. Provoke. When the death card flipped, I think me and Casey both kind of got the chills. One of the cards that flipped was the card of death, and I think uh, Tanner and I looked at each other like, whoa. All right, so I'm gonna give this kind of an overview first. In general, I would say this is a, a fairly positive overall outlook, especially given your question. But um, there are some problematic elements operating here. Like the death also. card. He basically said a lot of good, Things, but there was a few things that were questionable. So we'll start with that one, mainly because I don't want to stare at you the whole sure, time. Um, sure. so the death card actually does not mean that you or anybody else is imminently about to die. Um, and uh, just as a full disclaimer, if you know someone in your future that does die, this card had nothing to do with it. I didn't gotcha. Yeah, of course. The problem that the card represents um, is actually more of a worldview and kind of a self-image problem, where you have this idea that in order to um, make anything good happen or to produce any value for other people that you have to sacrifice or suffer in order to, to produce some effect. It was definitely a bit spooky and uh, cards came up that related to me, the Gemini, and me being like uh, some sort of guidance for him. This card here, this is the Knight of Swords, this is one reason that I think you are making it through this relatively clean so far. Gemini is an air sign. In general, the, um, the air signs are more rational, cerebral, logical kinds of personalities. So the funny thing is, um, this guy here, he's been a friend of mine for a while, and he started doing these investigations recently with me. And the first thing that you said about this card was like, the reason that I'm moving through this so kind of like cleanly and untouched is because you said Gemini, right? Yeah. He's a Gemini. All right. All the stuff we actually learned about Laveau, it was it was really badass. Mary Laveau, we kind of traveled out here because we wanted to learn more about her. And we plan on visiting her uh, tomb or crypt. Any recommendation or advice on any type of offering or any way to get any kind of interaction do you think that would be the best route? Here's what I would do. For one, you have to realize that she was a video practitioner. And video is an African diaspora religion. If you have any at all sense of entitlement going into that, um, it's not going to be good. But if you are looking to have some kind of an actual encounter or something or sign or signal or whatever, yeah. you're more likely to get it if you if you have made some respectful some approach. Kind of respectful like approach. Okay. He gave us a lot of valuable information as far as future investigations, as far as what we're doing. There's a reason that for thousands of years people leave offerings of food on their altars, offerings right. of water, offerings right. of liquor, whatever. It's because the spirits, even the deities, whatever that they're interacting with, can actually partake of that energy. Okay. And food, you know, especially if there's anything like a human spirit, you know, we've bonded with humans over, you know, for hundreds of thousands of years by sharing food. Sharing yeah. food, yeah. Alright, so now we're approaching the shrine and this is said to be even like more of an important site than her actual grave because her body was uh, believed to be stolen. So we have some offerings that we're going to go offer to her shrine and uh, we're hoping that will get us maybe some way to get closer or communicate. Ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay. People say if you leave offerings at her shrine, uh, you know, she'll typically do what you wish for. A lot of people wish for things like wealth and health and Tanner and I, the only thing that we asked for was for her to communicate with us.
all we asked for was communication. A lot of people asked for blessings or health or whatever. All we wanted was a chance to communicate with Marie. We were given a tip of a location to go to, but uh, we could only access it by boat, so we had to actually get a canoe. Let's see, what do we got? Eight person modified, uh, 84 bucks. Six person dome tent, looks good to me. Alligators, yeah, let's go. Apparently, back over here, across this. There's dry lands, woodlands, and this is where a lot of the voodoo activity and rituals would actually take place. And the only way for us to reach that is by hopping in this small ass canoe, and paddling over there with our camping gear and spending the night there to see if we can make contact or make any kind of activity. These are all mosquitoes. Alright, so I think we got everything. Uh, so we, got, we got food for the night for those. We got a tent, sleeping bags. We got all of our equipment. Alright, all right, let's do it. I think we're ready. How you feeling, Tim? Yeah, we got a ways to go still. Once we made it down the back of the canal, it got really narrow and there were tons of lily pads. You know that this is gator infested waters. This is like a small, small opening to find a camping ground, which is insane. I feel like we're almost lit on a god goose hunt right now. This is it, bro. Looks like the, the closest we're gonna be able to get, honestly. Yeah. All right, let's uh, pull our boat up. Here, I'll pull you up a little bit. All right. All right, so we just found a flat area. Uh, looks like a little clearing where we might be able to pitch the tent tonight. We're gonna try to set it up real quick. Let me see what you got back there. A whole lot of nothing. So, if anything, this seems like the only spot that we could get out here, but apparently this is where this woman used to come. It's starting to rain. We really need to hurry up and set this tent up. As soon as we started taking gear out of the boat, the rain started coming. It started pouring rain. Yeah, this looks like a pretty flat spot to me. Yeah, it's getting really cold and it's starting to rain. Okay.
We started building our tent in the rain. We needed to get our shelter as quickly as possible. saying oh we're just gonna go find a voodoo queen's hangout spot like no problem yeah, really. yeah we're like oh when we go to new orleans we'll, we'll check out her grave you know try to go communicate with her because she's kind of a big name in this world yeah can get in a boat canoe like two miles yeah. <laughs> build a tent in the rain like what the f Two miles. Yeah. <laughs> Build a tent in the rain. Like what the f canoe? Like two miles. Yeah. <laughs> Build a tent in the rain. Like what the. F we could also hear branches breaking around us the whole time. This fucking branch is breaking and shit moving over there. And it sounds big. Yeah. All right, well, hopefully the more noise we make, the more it'll stay away from us. It's not a comfortable feeling. It felt like being in the real life Blair Witch Projects. I don't know if like there's enough dry land out here for it to be like a bear or anything. Maybe a huge gator. We brought beef jerky. The reals. Awesome. All right, so I guess we're just gonna keep rolling according to plan. Did you bring that uh, that doll? Mm-hmm. This is Chloe from Myrtle's Plantation. She got her ear cut off for listening to stuff she wasn't supposed to. And poisoned and murdered owner of the home's two daughters and wife while he was away on business. This is your way to communicate with us right now. Is there anything you would like to tell people? What about this doll? How do you feel about this? Oh, you hear that? I heard something. How do you feel about this? I thought I heard like it. Like it? You like this doll? Marie, can you say something to the ovulus, please? Give me something, give me a sign, give me anything. Equal what? Want to be treated as an equal? Safe. Oh, we're safe? Okay, that's good. She says safe. I don't feel safe. We were getting some activity on the spirit box. We weren't sure exactly what it said at the time, but we are hearing all around us. Footsteps are getting loud, dude. Oh, yeah. You hear that, yeah, right? Yeah, no, there's something out there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We should probably chill on this beer box. The f is that? It's light. That sounds fing close. Dude, no, grab just, my gun. You can get the. 
This shit ain't going down like that, dude. It got to a certain point where I felt like, you know what, this, I don't like being inside of a tent and not being able to see what's around me. You know what I'm thinking? Hmm. What if, uh, I don't like not being able to see anything, and now that the rain's kind of letting up, maybe we go outside and light a fire. Okay. We could light a fire. Yeah. And we could keep running our tests, but then at least everything will be lit, and we mm -hmm. could see what's going on. I don't like feeling like I'm trapped in a box with walking around, you know no, what I mean? With no visibility. If you're out here with us, can you please communicate with us through the board? Instead of breaking branches and making footsteps around us, can you give us some clear communication? We can give you a while if you'd like. We just want to talk. Marie, earlier you were trying to talk to me, I could hear you through the spirit box. You told us we were safe. Are we safe? Can you say yes? It doesn't really feel safe out here. Is this where you came to perform your rituals? You can move this to yes or no. You could spell something out if you'd like. You could give us numbers. Can you give us any kind of sign? We came a long way just to be here and communicate with you. Try to spin it again? Mm-hmm. Let's go. Marie, now's your time. Talk to us, Marie. Move it to goodbye? Yep. So we've already done the spear box now for about 20 minutes. We've done the Ouija board, haven't gotten anything. We could leave the ovulus running, mm -hmm. and we could leave the EMF detector on. Um, but I kind of just want to like sit out by the fire with the gun for a little while. Yeah. And just make sure there's no like big animals out here. Yeah, it's freaky out here, man. It is freaky. Long day, <laughs> canoeing, hiking, camping, getting rained on. Kind of feels like we did all this shit for nothing. Yeah. I mean, we got a little tiny something out of the spirit box, but I didn't feel anything like something like concrete, you know? Yeah. Seems like whatever was out there kind of stopped moving around as much too. Finally went to sleep. Hope so. That would be nice. Maybe I could just prop this up somewhere so we can do both chill and I gotta hold this thing. That's the one thing that sucks about being a vlogger, <laughs> you know? And hold the camera yeah, all the time. You gotta have the right vlog kit. That was actually pretty cool. It had a little fire looking in it. There you go. Bam. Bam, that's gangster. There it is. How you guys like that? You like that? Leave a comment down below. You know, it's weird thinking about uploading the video, being in the middle of nowhere, telling the viewers, leave a comment down below. Right, right now, below. you're kind of just talking to yourself. I am. But, but later, but later be I'm gonna be to talking somebody. to them. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's weird. It's cool, though. You know? Well, the morning's gonna be a, a long morning. Yeah. Just kind of, we gotta pack yeah. everything again. Take get back in that out. stupid ass boat again. Yep. I will say this, it's probably gonna be a lot nicer in the daytime though, mm -hmm. you know? How creepy was that? Like going through that dark ass swamp? Just like that. Gators, right? Yeah. You saw the one set of eyes. Like, I don't think I was recording that when we saw the eyes. Oh, that's it? No, I don't think I got that on camera, but we saw, like we saw a set of eyes. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah, distant, but it's like a small alligator. I think it was probably like maybe a foot, foot and a half, just like one eye sticking out of the water, glistening, and then it went under. Mm -hmm. Nothing big, but. Whew. We get ourselves into some crazy shit, huh? This trip has been fucking, uh, I love what I do. Yeah. But it's been, it's exhausting, dude. It is pretty exhausting.
I mean, like, it looks like bug bites or something. Dude, that looks like a, like a handprint on you, for real. I'm gonna take a picture and show you. Wait, hold on. There's another one over here. These weren't scratches. These were very clearly defined, and you could see small handprints. Much smaller than mine, much smaller than his. Dude, that looks like a, like a handprint on you, for real. I'm gonna take a picture and show you. Wait, hold on. There's another one over here. That's fucking crazy, dude. They were like little kids' hands. They were too small to be an adult, and they were their handprints. Yeah, that looks like handprints, and it's like small. I'm not even joking. I started getting a really, really bad feeling in my gut. I'm not feeling too hot. I thought I had seen like the worst of what we were gonna see and then Casey started acting like all funny, like just sick and wasn't talking to me. You feeling all right, bro? in my entire life. I couldn't catch a breath because I kept gagging and puking up this black stuff. It's like hard to breathe. Here, stand up. What do you want, your water? We gotta go. Alright? No. I think I'm gonna puke again. Maybe in my mind at the time I'm thinking food poisoning. I've never seen anybody throw a black shit like that. But I knew we had to get going and, and get him seen. We gotta pack up the boat, man. Yeah, let's go. <sighs> we had to row three miles through alligator infested waters just to get back to the vehicle. While I felt like I was dying. Like I was dying. Like I was dying. that came out of him was up, so. 
I've never seen anything like that. The whole time in the car, Casey was just kind of sleeping in the passenger seat. I was worried about him. I didn't know what the was going on with him, so we got him to urgent care. They gave me some anti-nausea uh, medication and I took a few of those pills. I felt better within an hour. They didn't want me to leave until I did feel better, so I stayed in there. And once I started feeling a little bit better, they said I was good to go. A lot of people say, you know, you don't try to communicate with the other side, especially not a voodoo priestess, a well-known voodoo priestess who's supposedly the queen of voodoo, but uh, that's what we do. So we decided we wanted to try and communicate. I honestly don't think that we made communication uh, with LeBeau. Whatever did make communication with us was something much darker. Whatever marked me or made Casey sick, I don't think it was her. I don't know if it was connected or not, but me throwing up black vomit in the morning, it didn't really feel like we were with a peaceful entity. The interesting thing is, as we learn more about the history, she has had uh, six or seven children. Only one of them made it to adulthood. So, the handprints were from a child. I don't know if that's connected somehow. I don't know if this was some kind of voodoo curse that was happening to us or not. We tried to communicate, we asked you to communicate with us, but um, I don't think we had any communication with Marie. Everybody always says not to mess with voodoo, and you know, we like testing those boundaries. We like seeing if we could get reactions from the things that other people are mostly scared to try. try, 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 try. <laughs>